Good afternoon, um, and welcome to A California Childhood. My name is Michael Vern. I'm the owner and president of the Vern Collection of Japanese Art. The gallery has never quite looked like this before. <laughs> I decided to do this show. Uh, I decided to do this show about seven months ago for about four reasons, and I only can remember three of them. Um, <laughs> the first reason uh, that I decided to do this show is that. So many times when families come together, it's for a sad, sad occasion or somebody passes away and everybody gets together. <coughs> so the main reason for this was to get as many members of my family here to Cleveland to celebrate while we're all healthy. <coughs> My mom is 93 years old. Uh, she was here last night, but she's not in the best of health. But she did make it here last night. And he loves her. <laughs> and uh, at any rate, the second reason um, that I did this show is that a lot of people, they know who James Franco is. Uh, they're getting to know more about uh, Dave Franco, but really the most imaginative and one and and maybe the most special of the three brothers is a guy named Tom Franco, who is an artist uh, in Oakland, California. The third reason I did this uh, this is the 61st year of this gallery. I know a lot of you have never been in here. Uh, this is mainly a national gallery and international gallery we sell all over the world. And uh, until last night, uh, nobody knew who I was. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, about seven months ago, um, and I've been thinking about this show for about five years, uh, we do a show in Los Angeles. Um, 60,000 people come to the show and uh, James who was in Los Angeles at the time and uh, came to the show and we had a few minutes to talk and I said what would you think about doing a show with your brother in Cleveland Ohio I know you're really busy I know you're doing five books and movies and plays and everything else and I was sure he's gonna say oh my I'm sorry I, you know I just can't do it and he said uh, let's do it and the uh, show changed about 10 times from what it started out to be. And because uh, James' schedule is not something that anybody can control. And uh, the next week I had a show in San Francisco. And um, Tom lives in Oakland. And we're having dinner one night. And when I do these shows, I'm really, really focused. And uh, most of the time, I. You know, I'm, even if I'm with my nephews or something, my mind is really thinking about, you know, how can I survive in the art world? And so I'm sort of half listening and, and half talking to my family. But this time I was really, really listening. And, uh, and I asked Tom, uh, you know, what would you think of doing a show with your brother? And uh, he said, uh, I'm in. So, uh, I started planning out this show and it kept changing. Uh, the dates kept changing, the times kept changing, <coughs> when everybody could be here it kept changing. And about two months ago, I thought it was important <coughs> that I go out to Oakland to see who Tom Franco really is. So I went out on a Friday night. I stayed in a place called Emeryville, which is a, about a mile outside of Oakland. I woke up that morning on Saturday morning and I was going to meet with Tom at 11 and I asked the front desk clerk, uh, I said, where's a good place to have breakfast? Uh, it's not some chain or something. <laughs> and uh, he says, well, there's this little diner and it's called Rudy's I Can't Fail. 
And uh, I said, is it easy to get to? He says, yeah, it's just about a half a mile. You go over this bridge and you'll see it. <laughs> and uh, I'm directionally challenged. So I went out, I went over the bridge, tried to find this place for about 45 minutes. <laughs> Couldn't find it. And finally, I was just about to give up and go back and just eat some Marriott food. And uh, this policeman pulled up and I said, you have any idea where this Rudy's I can't fail this? And uh, he's really nice. He says, it's right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. Um, but this gallery, um, the movie Rudy, you know, when I, when I don't do this, I'm really interested in sports. But the movie, movie Rudy is sort of one of my favorite movies of all time. Because, you know, if a gallery in Cleveland, you know, can make it, um, against all the big galleries in New York and Paris and London and Munich. And that's what this show is also about um, because uh, this is about my family. And if I screw this up, my whole family is going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so lastly, Tom picks me up at 11 o'clock. Um, and he takes me to this place called the Firehouse Collective. Firehouse Collective is something that Tom put together. Uh, so all these artists that didn't have a lot of money would have a space to make art. And there are hundreds of these people that wouldn't have had this opportunity if it wasn't for Tom. And we uh, went to the first Firehouse Collective. It's next to a place called Dolly's Donuts. And everybody comes out of Dolly Donuts and gives gives Tom this big hug and says really, really nice things about him. And then we go up to the first firehouse collective. There's some artists up there and, and everybody's hugging Tom. And I thought, you know, I've never seen anything like this. The only time you ever see like something like this is, you know, somebody wants something from somebody or you know, some politician or whatever, and uh, I've never seen just an ordinary guy get this kind of reaction. And so we go to the next firehouse collective, and uh, we see Tom's show at the fire the firehouse collective, and all these artists are hugging him. We go right next door. There's this little place that Tom has made for this guy who cooks ribs. Uh, like a George Foreman cooker. He only has like a six by five foot space. And uh, it's called CJ's Smokehouse. And uh, the ribs look really, really good. And uh, and we took pictures with CJ. Everybody's hugging Tom. We went to three different, three more places for the Firehouse Collective. <clears throat> and this, this, the same thing happened. And uh, so then we go to Tom's house. And Tom lives in a, not a real uh, wealthy area uh, in Oakland. It's almost impossible because the rents are so high. And it's like this old warehouse. We go through these gates that electronically open and uh, we step into Tom's backyard and there's all these paint cans and toy parts and furniture parts and every part you could imagine. You can't even walk. And we go into his living room, and there's all these toy parts and furniture parts, <laughs> marbles. Uh, there's paintings everywhere, and you can't walk. So Tom wanted to show me the upstairs where his bedroom was, and you, you go to Tom's upstairs, and there are clothes strewn all over the place. <laughs> and uh, uh, then I, uh, I said, I, I then had to go to the bathroom, and I, I went to the bathroom, and it was really clean. <laughs> God, I forgot the last part here. On one second. Yeah. Hold on. I practice this in the shower. <laughs> At any rate, uh, I can't remember what I was supposed to say, but uh, by the time I left, 
Um, and what I think you'll get um, from Tom's talk is you're about to meet somebody that will change your life. Um, California childhood is, is about believing again like when you were five or 12 years old when you thought anything was possible and all your dreams might come true. And when you become an adult, you know, a lot of people put doubts in your mind. They tell you you can't do this. They do mean things. But uh, if you look at the wish box, if you look at the dragon toaster, uh, you look at tower one and tower two, you, you really realize that, um, that anything is, is possible. And it changed my life that one day I spent in Oakland. And I think today, um, uh, Tom, you know, may have that same effect on you. Uh, I sort of feel like a televangelist, but <laughs> uh, at, uh, at any rate, uh, with that, uh, I want to introduce you to the other talented, brilliant, and magical uh, nephew, 